Hello. Whoa, whoa, whoa. It is Wednesday, hump day, 8 a.m. Central Standard Time, Champagne and Illinois. And in this video, I will be talking about how to stay peaceful in a stressful job. So it's about to get real um, because I'm going to just hop into it because I don't like when people give all those extra intros in their, you know, their videos. So the first thing I want to talk about, and I don't want to sugarcoat anything for you. Let me make sure my phone is off. Um, I don't want to sugarcoat anything for you because <sighs> what is that good? What is good is that going to do? So the first thing is, it's not your job. It's you. It really is. It's you. Because nine times out of 10, if your job is stressful, well, 10 times out of 10, honestly, if your job is stressful, it is not the only thing that's stressful in your life. Now, it may be the biggest stressor in your life, but that doesn't mean that your job the things on the external world is what is really stressing you out because we don't have control over our situations. We have control over how we perceive our situations. So if we have control over how we perceive our situations, then it won't stress us out. Now, that doesn't mean that because something stress doesn't stress us out that it doesn't irritate us just a little bit or annoy us or something like that. Or it's like, mm, that is not really in alignment with me because honestly, I ended up leaving my nine to five because I felt like I was being overworked. So, but I had something else in place. So um, that's another thing. I had something else in place. So I was able to be like, you know what? This is not in alignment with where I'm trying to go in life. And um, there is no change. There is no upward movement, really. And people are trying to validate whether or not I can decide to get a raise or um, move up. So if that is the case and you, and you want to leave your job and you feel like your job is stressful, then you have to do something about that. And really no one is stopping you but yourself. A lot of the times it is our fear of change. It is our fear of what someone else, what, what someone else will say to us. Um, I was just talking to somebody else recently and their, they said that their family and friends has a big effect on, you know, them changing their life. And honestly, family and friends, they don't, they aren't out there to make you um, feel bad or to belittle you or down you. They really are just protecting you. They're, they're doing it out of love because they don't know anything else. So, of course, they're nervous about you doing something that people don't normally, um, a lot of people don't normally do. So, if your family's trying to talk you out of leaving, I'm not saying you need to leave your job, but before you do that, love where you are because there are blessings. So really that is the how, you know, I always bring it back to blessings and, and lessons learned because yes, there were things for me. I can only really relate it to my story. I can relate it to other people's story too, but I feel like it's more impactful when I, learn, I share with my story. So when I was at my nine to five, um, a lot of people were quitting I'll, I'll actually give a really stressful nine to five. I was working in a mental health hospital. So I was working at a hospital where um, children and people were probably schizophrenic. They were uh, suicidal, things like that. So they'll call you out your name. They'll try to spit on you. They'll try to punch you, kick you, all type of things. So that was a very stressful environment. Um, but I never was affected by that because I saw that these children, I worked on the youth unit, that these children and people, they have their own baggage. And you have to see that people got their own thing going on. You got your own thing going on. And no, not everybody is going to be understanding of your situation. But you do have to be that bigger person. If you want to have more peace in your life, you got to be that bigger person and do it because you want peace, not because you feel like 
they 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 deserve it they do deserve it too um everyone deserves peace everyone deserves love and really the way the reason why people are acting out in in ways that are not um acceptable is because they don't have love and they don't have peace so you have to be able to see that everybody got their own baggage everybody is coming to work with something and everybody is trying to figure this whole life thing out. So of course there are gonna be times where they're not the ideal person to be around, whether it's a coworker and either remove yourself from that situation, don't really be around that coworker or find a way to accept that coworker. Be like, okay, well, I know that they had a bad day or I know that they got this going on if they express that to you. Or just even if you don't know what they got going on, just accept the fact that they got something going on. You know, we all got something going on. So that was a really big takeaway for me not letting those people um, get to me because a lot of the times we take it personally. We, we turn it around to make it about us. And that is how we end up being stressful because we feel like we deserve this kind of respect. We deserve this love. We deserve this, this, um, I'll just keep it at that. This, we deserve this love and peace. So because we feel like we deserve this love and peace, we expect people to treat us that way. But we have to understand that if, and we have to look, look to see if people really deserve respect and give their self love because if they don't then how can you expect someone to give you love and respect so really we're expecting people um res i think i said respect we're expecting people to give us more than they give their self so once you're able to see like this person how they talk to themselves um really is really how they talk to themselves because that's the only and how they treat their self is a, a, a guide of how you think that they will treat you so you can really just like not really be around that person or you um find a way to cope with being around them and not take things personally because nine times out of ten it's not about us it's about them so also to be able to have peace in a stressful work environment is to have some kind of coping mechanism so um in my last nine to five i journaled i journaled a lot you know i would just go and just journal or i would go and meditate so you have to have these these habits in yourself to be able to to cope with that and be able to just you know go away and go into your own zone and whatever if you color you know color a little bit if you sing sing a little verse a little bit you know sing a positive song listen to a positive song um, take time away to pour back into yourself. And a lot of the times we're not doing that. We get so caught up in the world. And honestly, um, I had read before, the world has many, the world can distract us for the rest of our lives. The world has so many things in it to disturb our peace 24 seven, 365 until the end of our lifetime. And that's true. So you can't expect for the world to make way for you to have that peaceful environment. You have to take that peaceful environment in, in such a way. You have to make room in your own life for that peaceful environment. You have to make that a priority in your life. And a lot of the times, you're we're not making it a priority. I understand how hard it is. But I say we, I always talk in we, because we are one and it's only really one of us seeing ourselves separately. But anyways, um, we aren't really making that a priority and that is why we end up being stressful and we expect you know, other people to make our feelings a priority when we're not making ourselves a priority. So that's one thing. I don't know who, I cannot see who is on here. But um, so that's a big thing, that's a big thing and that's why we end up expecting these people to treat us this this certain kind of way. And it's like, you know, we have to really let that go. We have to let that go. So another thing that I want to talk about in the when you are in a stressful work environment is to mind your own business. Honestly, that goes a long way with being in a you know stressful work environment because when you are 
minding other people's business. And I will say as far as not if your if your job requires you to be in other people's businesses, like as far as if you work, um, like I worked as a home visitor. So I had to be in other people's businesses. But if you don't, if your work doesn't require you to be in other people's businesses, then don't be in other people's businesses. And I'm not afraid to say that because a lot of people don't want to accept the fact that, you know, you got to mind your own business. And if you, if there, a lot of the times people are so accustomed and used to chaos and drama in their life. So if you if you see that someone is talking about something that seems very uh some tea or whatever and you know they're talking negatively about somebody or they are um i don't know they're just talking negatively about a situation or about their life you can just remove yourself from the situation walk away if you can walk away um, or do something else to distract you, do something else that's more productive. I will journal in that moment if I can't actually leave that situation. Um, or talk to yourself in your head and just be like, you know, that person is just going through something right now. So don't make it about you or don't get into it and then start affirming that. Words is really powerful. So then when you start talking to people, you'd be like, mm-hmm, that's true. I feel that too. This happened in my life. Now you're affirming all of those things in in your life as well. So you're building those feelings back up. I talk about this in my master class. You're building those feelings back up. So a lot of the times when you're engaging in other people's conversations, especially when they're so used to seeing the negative in their life and complaining about their life, then you're you're minding their business basically. You know, that's different than somebody coming to you and talking to you and you holding space for them. But a lot of the times you I have seen people um just come into somebody else's business or say something um, and be like, well, that's not true. Or, you know, just coming into a conversation, honestly. And it may not even be a conversation between those people. So a lot of the times I kept my peace and my work environment, which um, was stressful at times. It wasn't stressful at times. Was just, if I see that this conversation isn't, isn't about me or they're, I don't want to really even talk about it. Even if it if it was about me, if it's something, usually it's something great. I never walked in on somebody talking bad about me um, when I started doing these practices. But I would just walk away. Like there's no need to to answer somebody else's question when they're asking somebody else a question. Um, and then getting into those feelings and somebody else say something smart or whatever the case is. And usually nine, out nine times out of 10, when you mind your own business, the world makes way for you to not be in that business at all. If you stop putting yourself in dr drama, dramatic um, situations, hi, Tiaqua. Um, if you stop putting yourself in dramatic situations, um, which I say dramatic or situations that require drama, then your life is, or the universe is seeing that, okay, this person doesn't really want to be in these kind of fields, you know? So really you're, you're, raising your vibration and your frequency so the you're just not gonna be in those situations it's kind of like i don't know if you guys have watched the secret it was on netflix um some years back but um hey love um but it was on the secret it was the this was on the secret some years back and they were saying that when you um when you are at when you wake up in the morning or you do something and you are starting off on a negative slope or whatever the case is, then that ripple effect occurs. So that's kind of the same way in just your overall perspective of life. So if you are seeing your life in a negative perspective, you'll continue to see your life in this negative perspective. When you start to see your life in this positive perspective, start doing more positive things in your life, um, you know, minding your own business, not putting yourself in in chaotic situations or um, 
you know, negative situations and negative conversations, then your world will end up shifting itself around that so that you're not in that anymore. So you really are a co-creator, but you have to come with your half, you know, and a lot of, of us aren't coming with our half. We aren't meeting the universe. And that's the thing. We, we think that it's just if we pray about it or we talk about it or we speak it into existence, then it's just going to come to us. And that's not true. You know, we have to do something ourselves. We have have to either remove ourselves out those situations we have to start building healthy coping mechanisms we have to take that action take that stuff in our life take that leap of faith in our life and then the world will start aligning for us um but we're thinking that it's backwards we thinking that if we get this first then we will be able to you know then we will be able to do it but a lot of the times that doesn't produce consistency and longevity in our life so there was this this one time in one of my jobs when I worked at the mental health hospital, um, there was this situation where a support call, it, it would be like, it basically, if, if somebody is acting out, then they need people from all different um, um, floors to come and help with that one particular individual. So I used to work on the adolescent unit. And I remember I worked there for six months. I remember that they I all for every support call on my unit, I never was there. But it I never of tried to avoid it, I swear. And they would be like, Ari, why are you never here for the support call? And I was like, Because I ended up getting called down to da 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 da. I ended up having to go run this errand. I didn't know that the support call was about to happen, but it just it just happened, you know, and I never really was really around. Out of all the times that I was there, I never got punched. I never got spit on. Of course, I probably got called out my name, maybe. But I just didn't take it personal. You know, like, you know, I'm not going to argue back with somebody. Fight fire with fire. That's ridiculous. Um, especially if they're in this place where they need that love. You are supposed to stand and be in that love. Like, that is what they need. If they've never gotten it, gotten it in their life, then that's why we got to pour it into ourselves so that we can give to other people because they need it. The world needs it. We expect that the, we want to, we want to see world peace and, and have world love, but we don't have that peace and love within ourselves. And it starts world peace and world love is when everybody have eternal and eternal peace and love within their self then they can be peaceful in the world then they can be loving in the world but for right now the masses are not at that right now so it's very hard to do this this job or this role in the world because we have we, we we're going to experience a lot of adversity you know i experienced a lot of people you know not being so loving to me but i have to be that role model for the world to see that you know you are capable of being loving you are capable be capable of being peaceful even when the circumstances aren't ideal because once again it's not about controlling the situation it's about controlling how you respond to that situation and sometimes you just gotta not you know fight it back you know you just gotta let it go and that's a big thing I also want to leave you guys with this this quote that my mindset coach had left me with one day. Loving the hearts, girl. Thank you for the support. Um, she said, love where you are, and if it's not right, then love will move you. And I love that quote because at that job that I was in, this would probably be the last little story I want to tell you guys because this is a big thing. We got to see that life is happening for us and not against us. And I keep saying this mantra because it is so true. Life is happening for you and not against you. And I was just talking to one of my sisters yesterday about, about this. Like, you know, um, there was this, when I was at this mental health hospital, I, I did love where I was. You know, I found a way to love where I was at this job. And I ended up getting fired one day. That's a whole nother story in itself. But I ended up getting fired from the job and I was hurt. I was so hurt about, you know, getting fired. But that job was not for me. You know, I ended up going, I ended up being a delivery driver and I had a really hard time accepting the fact that I was a delivery driver because I went to school for four years for community health. So I'm like, what? I went to school for four years to be a delivery driver. So there was a lot of resistance in that part in my life there was a lot of resistance in that part in my life. And um, 
I couldn't accept that. I couldn't um, come to terms around that. But that was really where I needed to be because my the job at the time, I worked the 3 p.m. shift to the 11 p.m. shift. And at the time, I was in yoga teacher training. So the delivery driver job gave me more freedom in my life. That's why I said we got to look at the blessings and the lessons, not the, the negative. I could have focused on the fact that, oh, my God, I'm delivering people food. I went to school. I wasted my time. You know, did I get the right degree? You know, am I going to be doing this forever? I could have ruminated on that over and over and over again. But, inst- well, I did for a while, and it didn't get better until I switched my perspective. I changed the way I was looking at it. And then I started to accept the fact, like, wow, this is actually really beneficial because I could be delivering somebody food, and if I'm short on the order, I can go, and I was also doing, like, work trade at my yoga teacher's uh, studio. I can go and, like, get some clothes out the dryer real quick or put some clothes in the washer real quick or fold up something real quick until I get another order. Um or the fact that I could just choose my schedule every week. So if there was something that came up in the yoga teacher training, I could just not choose to schedule myself that week. That wouldn't have happened if I was working at that 9 to 5 where I was working 3 p.m. to 11 p.m. I had this set shift. And because I worked at a hospital, I could have been mandated to stay if my relief didn't come. Um, I would be asked to come in early. I would be asked to come in on my off days. My schedule was never the same because somebody else chose my schedule. So that really wasn't uh ideal for my my life at that moment and once i really accepted that i started to become happy you know because i seen that lesson in it so it's always a blessing it's always a lesson and you got to focus on that because we're so programmed to focus on the negative we see the negative in our life we automatically go to that you know we experience that we're comfortable with that and then once i got my yoga teacher training certification um, I ended up getting another job. And not only was this next job um, less, they wasn't kicking me and spitting on me and punching me and calling me out my name. They wasn't doing that. Um, it was better pay. It was uh, a less you know, stressful as far as external work environment, but it still had its things. And that's why I'm saying, you know, it's not the job because there were a lot of people that quit that job. And I'm just like, you know, I'm not going to quit the job because there's no point in me um, I'm not I'm not seeing the job in that light. Now, I'm not saying that other people didn't have reason, uh, valid reasons for quitting the job. But I stayed there much longer because I found I found the how it helped me in my life and how it can help me grow. And a lot of the times growth and when things challenge you, it's not the is it's not the most comfortable situations. And honestly, you notice that, you know, a lot of some people. You know, they may leave a job and they may get another job. And then there's something about that job that stresses them out, that that makes them upset or whatever the case is. So um, it's always something about everything. That's life. So we can't expect these situations to be ideal. All we can do is change how we perceive these situations and see the blessing and the lesson in the situation. So that's really how you can um, how you can stop being stressful at a work environment or just any environment, you know. Remove yourself from the situation um, by minding your own business. People don't like to hear that, you know, but a lot of the times we put ourselves in these situations like we are. And I'm just I got to be real with y'all, like walk away, do something else, you know, put mind other people's businesses who are uplifting themselves, you know, who who want to be where you're at. Pick their brain, you know, talk to them, mind their business. Don't mind other people's business businesses who complain about life who don't have um much going for themselves who don't who aren't really disciplined you know don't don't mind a business you know okay because it's not helping you it's keeping you stagnant it's keeping them stagnant because now y'all are affirming that stagnation to each other and that's not helping humanity um and then know that it's not your job it's you start looking at the ways that you you act in your life, you know, is, am I just stressed at my job? You know, be honest with yourself, you know, and nine times out of 10, it's not your job. It could be your spouse. It could be your children. It could be your family members it could be in, and your job, you know? So if it's that, you know, then it's not your job. It's you. And, you know, you have to be able to change you and, and reprogram yourself and unlearn the things that you have been learning so that you can be the best version of yourself. Because, from young, we aren't really taught to be the best version of ourselves. We were taught to be a version of ourselves to make other people comfortable. And yeah, 
So hope you guys really enjoyed this. I know that I uh, I said that it was going to be, you know, I may have stepped on some toes, but you know, hey, you know, some people really got to hear it. So have a great Wednesday, hump day, and peace out. I love you guys. I love you ladies so, so much. Mwah, mwah.